Hello, my brothers and sisters. I greet all of you in the name of our Heavenly Father, Abba Yahuwah, the Most High. And I greet you all in the name of His only begotten Son, His eternal life, the Son of the living Almighty, the true Messiah, the one who came down and gave his life for us on a tree. The one who said that he would build his assembly that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Master Yahushua, the Nazarene, through their precious spirit. I hope all of you are doing well. Those of you who are true believers and true followers of our Father and our King, those of you who are true comrades, those of you who are true brothers, those of you who are true sisters, I greet all of you. And I hope that all of you are doing well, that you're standing strong in the faith, that you're persevering through the challenges that you're going through in your personal lives, that you all are standing strong and if you are wavering that you're praying in your praying closets and you're trying to do the best you can to do the right thing. I greet all of you joy and peace. And I'm here as our Father King allowed me to be here to encourage you to tell you to stand strong. Don't cave under pressure. Have the boldness of our Father and our King. And do what it is that you know is right in our Heavenly Father's eyes, in His Son's eyes. And if there is anything that you have fallen short, that you repent, that you turn from the error of your way and make those things right. As I've been granted permission by our Father and our King to continue their teaching regarding woe unto sectarianism, because I'm sure many of you are aware of the sectarianism that's all around us. And these are the times of great challenge, great tests. Those who are falling under peer pressure are cracking. And they're balling up in a fetal position. But for those who are truly servants of our Father and our King, who trust in their leadership, who desire their rulership and their will to prosper. You all have nothing to fear. You see, my brothers and sisters. So let us continue to go on this journey of our Father King's warning and teaching. For those of you who have your scriptures, let's please turn to Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, please. Thank you, my Father my King. I said you please. Help us to grow and to learn this day. Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, my brothers and sisters. We're going to go back in time just to look at our ancestors and reflect. And just look at some things that can really inspire us and help us in our, in our issues. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? So Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. And let's start at the 12th verse. This is pertaining to what was really required from our Heavenly Father. What Masha was really trying to tell our ancestors that was so simple. And hopefully that we can learn these things. Because Master Yahushua also expounded on these things. Let's go to Masha and see what our Father, through His Son, through their precious spirit, inspired Masha to tell our ancestors in ancient times. So Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, brothers and sisters. And let's start the 12th verse. And it reads, it says, And now, Yisrael, what do the Master Yahuwah, your Almighty, require of you? But to fear the Master Yahuwah, your Almighty, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Master Yahuwah, your Almighty, with all your heart, and with all your soul, to keep the commandments of the Master Yahuwah and his statutes 
which I command you this day for your good? So that's a powerful question because this was a simple requirement that our ancestors were to really reflect on and to make an effort to fear our Heavenly Father. To love Him. Do you see this? To be obedient to Him. Do you understand, my family? See, our Heavenly Father was not tyrannical to where He just wanted to oppress the children of Israel. You see this? Now, there's, there were things that they were going to comply with that Abba enforced. Do you understand? But he desired them to love him because he loved them. Do you see this, my family? He didn't just want people to be around him or to serve him or to worship him. And they had not love for him. Our Heavenly Father never wanted that type of relationship with any being. He desires his creation to love him, to have respect for him. Do you see this? My brothers and sisters. And see, we can learn. If we go back and we look, we can learn our Heavenly Father's nature. He desires us to love him. You see this, my brothers and sisters. Verse 14, he says, it says, behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the master Yahuwah's, your almighty. The earth also with all that therein is. You so you know it's interesting because man gets even in these times man can get so arrogant, <laughs> and they think that they own this planet. No, make no mistake of this. I have the Father; He's the one who is the possessor of heaven and earth, and He has given all power and authority to who? His Son, Master Yahushua, the Inheritor. This earth belongs to Him. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? And he's going to show man in his timing, in his father's timing. They're going to show man exactly what it means by that. Man is going to find out that this earth is not truly theirs. It's going to be given, as our father and our king said, it's promised to the meek. They shall inherit the earth. Do you see this, my family? But those who are evil and wicked, you will be removed from it. But understand who possesses this planet. Understand that it's our Heavenly Father. And he has given all things to his son. Do you understand? Master Yahushua possesses these things. All power has been given to him in heaven and in earth. And there's nothing you can do about that. Those of you who are haters of the king. Now, look what it says here. Thank you, my father, my king. It says here, verse 15, only the master Yahuwah had a delight in your fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Do you see this? Can you see what inspired our heavenly father? He loved our ancestors. And for those of you in your sectarianism, as far as in Israel, was very interested that when you see passages of scripture like this, you clap your hands and you jump for joy in your sectarianism. And in your arrogant heart, you say, Abba loves only us. But you are ignorant, those of you who think that way, and you need to repent and come out of your dumbness and your sectarianism. You see, Abba, yes, it's true, he does love our ancestors, and he chose Israel. Absolutely. But many have basically made this notion that Abba hates the other nations. You know, no, he hates what they've done. He hates the sin. The same thing that pertains to Israel. He hates Israel's sins. These things are in the scriptures. If you read it carefully, my family. So for those of you who say that the strangers are Israel in a Gentile mind or these strangers are Israel. Well, let's look closely at the text and let our Father King teach us so we can understand and come out of sectarianism. Now, listen, my family. 
It says here, again, 15, verse 15, only the master Yahuwah had a delight in your fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your hearts and be no more stiff necked. See, this is something that we have to realize. Do you see this? As his people, to come out of the stiff neck mind frame. Do you understand? Listen, verse 17. For the master Yahuwah, your almighty, is it has God of gods, meaning almighty of almighties. Do you understand? As far because you have some people that say he, they'll sit there and they'll say that he some people will make the error, and we, we all can have a misunderstanding when we know he is the one true almighty. But understand that the word Elohim, meaning power, do you see this? There's only one will, our Heavenly Father's will, you understand. That is supreme. But he had his court. Do you understand? His power of attorney. And it was many that possessed that. From the heavenly host to even men who he permitted to represent his power of attorney. So it says here, thank you, Father, my king. So it says, for the master Yahuwah, your almighty, is the almighty of mighty ones. Or almighty ones, as far as his power of attorney is concerned. And the master of masters. A great almighty, a mighty and a terrible, which regard not persons nor take reward. Notice how Abba is not a respecter of persons. Notice how it says in what we just read in verse 17, which regardeth not persons nor take reward. You see, some people think that they can flatter our Heavenly Father. It doesn't work that way. We have to come to him truly. And to be sincere. All of us. You understand? Verse 18. He does execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow. And loves the stranger. And giving him food and raiment or clothing. So the scriptures attest that Abba loves the stranger. Now for those of you who say that. Wait a minute. That these are strangers pertaining to Israel. Well let's see. Because we know he loves Israel, but we also know he loves strangers. Now, my question rhetorically is, when it says that he loves a stranger, is it talking about Israel? Or is it talking about the other nations? Let's read. Look at 19. Love you, therefore, the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Hmm. So, how can these strangers be Israel? How can they be? It says he loves the strangers. Does it not? Then notice the commandment. Love you, therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Do you see this? So, in the name of Master Yahushua with the Messiah, for those of you who, is, who are willing to be obedient, come out of your sectarianism. Now, does this mean to be oblivious to what's going on? No. But true Israel loved the strangers. You see this. Now, verse 20. You shall fear the master Yahuwah, your almighty. Him shall you serve, and to him shall you cleave, and swear by his name. See, it's more than just swearing by his name. Notice what it says here in verse 20. It says, you shall fear the master Yahuwah, your almighty. You see that? See, that's the principle. That's key. Do you fear him? Those of you who are stiff neck, listen carefully. Do you fear Abba Yahuwah? Do you fear his son, Master Yahushua the Messiah? If you do not, then that's the area you need to work on. You see this, my brothers and sisters. 
And for those of you who continue in your stiff neck, be warned. You will be dealt with. So it would be wise to repent. You see, my brothers and sisters. Thank you, my father, my king. Verse 21. He is your praise and he is your almighty. That have done for these, that have done for you these great and terrible things which your eyes have seen. It says, your fathers went down into Egypt with three score and ten persons. And now the master Yahweh Almighty have made you as the stars of heaven for multitude. So notice how our Heavenly Father caused Israel to prosper. Notice how, as the prophet is telling us, Masha is saying that he is our praise. He is our almighty. See, it's all about him. Do you understand? So these are things that were required of Israel. Because there were a people that fell victim to sectarianism. You see, my brothers and sisters. And those who are stuck in sectarianism now and who are struggling with it. If you would only take the time to learn to fear our Heavenly Father. Learn to love him with all your heart. All your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. When you love your neighbor as yourself. Do you see this? You'll grow in so much revelation. To understand that our Heavenly Father. He loves us. Do you see this? And he wants us to love him. And so many people. If we're not careful, we can have this attitude to where we want to try to use our Heavenly Father for things that are beneficial. Do you see this? And if we're not careful, we'll get swept into sectarianism. Now, let's go to a time. Thank you, Father, my king, for your wisdom. Let's go into a time of the prophets and the kings. We're going to learn about one of our ancestors, King Ahab. And... Our ancestor had some good things that he did, but over time he began to fall into sectarianism and begin to do things that Abba Yahuwah was not pleased with. And so we can learn and be humbled, all of us who truly desire to be humble, we can learn from his life and the things that this king experienced, the wrong things, and we can try our best to learn from it, see how Abba responded to him and to try to take these things to heart in our relationship with him and his son and with people in general. So let's go to 1 Kings, please. 1 Kings, 22nd chapter. And this is dealing with the time of sectarianism regarding the kingdom of Israel. The kingdom was split. Those of you who are Bible students, uh, you knew you know about the uh, please guide me find my king. You knew about the kingdom being split as far as the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And so now we have where King Yehoshaphat, which is representing the southern kingdom, he's coming to King Ahab, which represents the northern kingdom, and is dealing with a particular issue regarding a battle that's going to take place. So these two kings are going to come together regarding a particular decision. And let's find out in the midst of sectarianism how these two kings respond and what transpires and how Heavenly Father deals in the matter as far as with these two kings, specifically speaking. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 22, please. And let's start at verse 1. It says, And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Yehoshaphat, the king of Judah, or Yahuda, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel, or Yisrael, said unto him, excuse me, thank you, Father King, for the correction. It says, and the king of Israel said unto his servants, know you that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? So, notice this particular place, Ramoth Gilead. Notice the ambition of the king of Israel. 
And notice that King Yehoshaphat is coming down to actually meet with him and they're going to discuss this particular move regarding of the taking of Ramiah of Gilead. Now let's see what happens. Verse 4. It says, And he said unto Yehoshaphat, Will you go with me to battle to Ramiah of Gilead? And Yehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. So let's stop for a moment. So notice how Yehoshaphat, he's ready to go to war with the man. He's willing to ride for him. He's, he's basically saying, hey, I'm with you. We're brothers. What's mine is yours. And that's the right thing to do as far as they're both Israelites. They're both, you know, as far as trying to come together to deal with a common enemy. But let's really focus in on the two kings. Let's focus on Yehoshaphat. And we're going to focus on King Ahab. So King Ahab has asked him to join him in battle. Do you see this? Yehoshaphat is letting him know, basically, I'm standing with you. What's mine is yours. Now, let's see what happens. Verse 5. Thank you, my father, my king. And Yehoshaphat said unto the king of Yisrael, Inquire, I ask you, at the word of the master Yahuwah today, that's powerful. See, what we can learn is this. Yehoshaphat was willing to support his brother. See, Yehoshaphat wasn't, as far as in the context, he wasn't consumed by sectarianism. Ahab was. Ahab is trying to have an affinity with him. Do you see this now? Yehoshaphat is willing to comply and support his brother. But notice how, what he says. Look at verse. Let's go back. Thank you, Father King. Look at verse 5 again. And Yehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray you, or inquire, I ask you, at the word of the Master Yahuwah today. So he's asking him. Basically, what he's saying is, What is the word from on high? What does Abba have to say about it? See, Yehoshaphat didn't just jump and just say, okay, we're going to do this. He wants to know, what does Abba have to say about it? Now, verse 6. Then the king of Israel, the king, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said unto them, shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for Adonai, or the master, shall deliver it unto the hand of the king. You see that? We're going to focus on these prophets. Many of you who are familiar with the story, you already know, and that's good, but Abba is going to really have us focus on that. Because I want you to see the sectarianism. Once Yehoshaphat asked him, as far as did he inquire, as far as our Heavenly Father's word, notice what this particular king, what Ahab had, had basically did. He gathered these particular prophets to give an answer on behalf of our Heavenly Father. Now let's listen. Verse 7, And Yehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Master Yahuwah? Besides that we might inquire of him. <laughs> See, Yehoshaphat wasn't moved by these men in the words that they were speaking. He was able to discern by Abba putting in his spirit. He was able to discern there was something that wasn't right. Despite these prophets and what they were saying, he was able to detect that these men were false. So he's asking Ahab. Look what he says. Thank you, Father, my king. And Yehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the master Yahuwah besides that we might inquire of him? I want you to notice something as I find a king educate us. Notice how when Yehoshaphat first asked 
about the word of Master Yahuwah. Notice what, go back up to verse number six. This is what Ahab does. Look, it says, then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together. You see that? The prophets together. Now, look at what Yehoshaphat says in verse 7. And Yehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of Master Yahuwah? Besides that we might inquire of him. Notice the difference between the prophets and the prophet of Master Yahuwah. See, there's a difference. Do you see this, my brothers and sisters? And notice how there were more prophets. There were more false prophets than the actual prophet of Master Yahuwah. Do you see that? Let's continue. I want you to focus on King Ahab's answer when Yehoshaphat was able to detect the false prophecy and then ask, was there a true prophet of Master Yahuwah? I want you to see how, as far as Ahab, how he struggled with sectarianism. Listen here. It's powerful. Thank you, Father King. Verse 8. And the king of Israel said unto Yehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Yimla, by whom we may inquire of the master Yahuwah. But I hate him, for he do not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Yehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. That's powerful. You see that, family? Notice what this king said. The king of Israel. And I want you to notice what Yehoshaphat said, too. The king of Judah. But... Notice how, aha, notice what he said about the prophet of Master Yahuwah. Do you see this? He said he hated him. Do you know that hating the prophet of Master Yahuwah is basically hating Master Yahuwah? Do you understand that? Do you understand it, my family? Notice his affinity towards the false prophets that was telling him that he can take Ramiah of Gilead. See, he desired Ramiah of Gilead when you, be, when you read the beginning of the verse. You see this, my brothers and sisters? It's powerful, isn't it? Thank you, Father McKean. Now, let's continue. It says here, go back to I want you to see this. This is so powerful. Go at, look at verse 8 again. It says, And the king of Israel said unto Yehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Yimla, by whom we may inquire of the master Yahuwah, but I hate him. For he do not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Yehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Notice what Yehoshaphat said. He disagreed with him. He said, Let not the king say so. See, what's so powerful about that is that Yehoshaphat didn't get sucked up into sectarianism. He didn't cave into pressure and say, okay, you know what? Since you don't like them, I don't like them either. Let's listen to these false prophets and let's take the land. Let's take Rami of Gilead. He didn't say that, did he? Yehoshaphat was a soldier, wasn't he? He told him, let not the king say so. Now listen. Then, verse 9. Then the king of Yisrael called an officer and said, it, and said hasten. Hasten here, Micaiah, who the son of Yimla. So see, now, King Ahab basically is like, okay, I'm going to agree with him. Because he already know Yehoshaphat is suspicious of these false prophets. So now he's like, okay, let's go bring Micaiah. Oh, Micaiah who? Verse 10. And the king of Israel and Yehoshaphat, the king of Yehuda, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. So as you can see, the false prophets are still prophesying. They're false prophecies. Do you see this? Verse 11. And Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, made him horns of iron. And he said, this saith Master Yahuwah, 
With these shall you push the Syrians until you have consumed them. Do you see that? So this prophet, this false prophet, Zedekiah, he said, thus say Yahuwah. That's powerful. Call Amar Yahuwah. When that is spoken, that is speaking on behalf, that's speaking on behalf of the Almighty himself. To be able to utter those words. Call Amar Yahuwah. Thus say, it has thus saved the Lord in our English Bible. But basically he's saying, this is what Master Yahuwah said. But Abba Yahuwah didn't say that, did he? Verse 12. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the master Yahuwah shall deliver it into the king's hands. You see what they did? Notice how they lied. Do you see this? Notice the sectarianism. Look at this. Verse, verse 13. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah, who spoke unto him, saying, <clears throat> Excuse me, behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let your word, I pray you, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. You see that? You see how they was trying to tip Micaiah? Micaiah who to speak? The same thing that those false prophets were speaking. You see how the temptation came to try to basically tempt the true prophet of the master to fall into league and sectarianism with those false prophets and speak the same things that sound good because they didn't want to offend the king. Do you see this? But let's see what Micaiah who did. It says that Micaiah who said, as the master Yahuwah lives, what the master Yahuwah said unto me, that will I speak. That's powerful. You see, my brothers and sisters. So we can learn here that Micaiah, he spoke what the master truly said, even though the king had a problem with it. Do you see, my brothers and sisters? And for those of you, as you continue to read the story, you'll find out what happened regarding the prophecy, regarding how Abba Yahuwah, as far as had the council with his heavenly host, and how he dealt with Ahab. As far as the lying spirit that was basically strong delusion was sent upon the, the lying prophets. Why? Because